Well, good morning. How is everyone this morning? Good? Fall is here, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's not even the end of summer yet. Well, we're close, I guess. But I hope you had an amazing summer, and I hope you got to enjoy some time with family and friends. And maybe you did something really adventurous when you were out and about this summer. Have, have, let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone all in with something? Like, how many people have gone bungee jumping? Anybody? Okay, when you jump off that platform, you're all in, right? How many people have seen those guys in the suits that jump off cliffs and fly? They're all in. How many people have ever gone skydiving? Why? <laughs> Why are you jumping out of a perfectly good plane? <laughs> it's quicker, yes. <laughs> you will land. One way or another, you are going to land. Have you ever gone all in? Last week, as you saw in the video, we talked a little bit at Party in the Park about Elisha and how Elijah followed God's call and went all in. And we asked, what if a church did that? What if a church went all in? What, what would that look like? What, what would it look like if a church went all in? And I said last week that I'm going to answer that question at least in part this week. And what I want to give you this week is real simple. I want to give you two phrases, three numbers, four words. Two phrases, three numbers, four words. Okay, here's phrase number one. If you're writing it down, write this down. Phrase number one, live six, eight. Phrase number one, live six, eight. That's what we're all about here at Sandwich Baptist Church. If you're visiting us this morning for the first time, you're saying, what is this church all about? We're all about that phrase, live six, eight. Our vision states, we want to see ordinary people, that's you and me, make an extraordinary difference because we're living six, eight. And the phrase live six, eight, comes from the Old Testament verse, Micah 6, 8, where it says, He has shown you, O mortal, O man, O woman, O child, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? Here's what's good, and here's what God requires of us. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. What does God require of us? He wants us to love mercy and to act justly and walk humbly with him. We're to walk humbly with God every day our feet are on this planet. And, and, and walk is journey language. Walk means movement. The, the Christian life is the journey of following Jesus. And, and we're not just to journey with Jesus. Do you notice what the phrase says? We're to journey with Jesus in a humble way. We're to walk humbly with our God. In other words, we're to journey with God from a posture of humility, a posture of surrender. We acknowledge that we're in his kingdom, and he's the king. He's a loving king, but he's the king, and we're his subjects. And so the position of which we live our lives is from the posture of humility towards him, the posture of surrender. Now, there's a lot involved in walking humbly with Jesus. And this next ministry year, we want to focus on two specific areas when it comes to walking humbly with Jesus. The first specific area, and here's word number one. Remember I said four words? Here's word number one, pray. Pray. As we looked at in the spring, in the book of Acts, when Peter and John got in trouble with the Jewish leadership, you may remember this, they were arrested, and then they were told not to preach or teach about Jesus anymore. When, when they were released, they went to the other believers, they found the other believers, and they told them what had happened. And after the Christ followers had heard their story, it says in the Bible, they all lifted up their voices together in prayer. And it's a great prayer in Acts 4. Let me just read you the last bit of it, verse 29 and 30. And now, O Lord, hear their threats, and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. 
may miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Do you notice what they prayed for? They, they prayed for boldness in speaking about Jesus. They, they prayed for his healing power to work through them. They prayed that they would perform signs and wonders through the power and the authority of his name. And as you read through in Acts 4, you see God answered their prayer, and they had a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, which enabled those Christ followers to preach and minister with boldness. Prayer unleashes the power of God. When God's people pray, great things happen. There's never been a great move of God in history without Christ followers lifting their voices together in prayer. So church, let's go all in and do that this next ministry year. Let's gather together and lift up our voices in prayer asking God for a great move, asking God to unleash his power amongst us. This next year, we're not just going to pray, we're going to learn about prayer. Here's some things we're going to do. We're going to go on an all-prayer adventure together in January. Tell you more about that as we get closer to that date. We're going to get the whole church together in different areas. Everybody's going to be on the same page for a number of weeks. Small groups, everybody talking about prayer. And then, and then we've asked each ministry director to say, how can you raise the value of prayer? Expectant, bold prayer in your ministry area. And then, as has already been mentioned, we're starting first Tuesdays. First Tuesday in October, plan to be here. We're going to worship together, and we're going to pray together. Because we believe in the power of prayer. And one of the specific areas that we want to focus in on this next ministry year is the area of prayer. Now, when it comes to walking humbly, there's a second specific area. Here's word number two. Word number one, prayer. Pray. Word number two, heal. Heal. Jesus came announcing and demonstrating that the kingdom of God was at hand. Through healings, through the casting out of demons and other miracles, Jesus demonstrated that the kingdom of God was breaking in to repair and restore and recreate and heal every dimension of human existence. Over and over in the gospel, we see Jesus healing relationally and spiritually and emotionally and physically. And then we see in the Gospels that Jesus commissioned his followers to go do the same thing. Today, I believe Jesus still wants to redeem and restore and heal that which has been torn apart by sin. And he wants us to join him on that mission. I don't know about you, but I'm I'm both heartbroken and tired of seeing Christians struggle so much. In in areas of physical health and relationships and spiritual health and emotional health. And and I believe that Jesus wants to heal people today. I believe he wants to heal them physically and emotionally and spiritually and relationally. Church, let's go all in and pray expectantly for an outbreak of healing. Physical healing. Relational healing emotional healing, spiritual healing. And and that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for it. During our Sunday services, after our Sunday services, we're going to pray for people to be healed. On the first Tuesdays, some of those first Tuesdays are going to be dedicated simply to praying for people to be healed, whatever the healing need is. I'm going to teach on it. Part of what I'm going to be teaching starting next week in in our King, Savior, Healer, We're going to look at the miracles of Jesus in chapter 8 and 9 and and, and just how he healed and and related to people. And and I'm just, this is a little tangent right now. I'm I'm going to ask you to pray for me for healing. I have been, for the last seven days, battling a double ear infection, a nasty one. I, I haven't had something like that since I've been five years old. But it is driving me crazy. I'm on my second type of antibiotic and it's not working so can you pray that god will heal me because my wife says i'm cranky about it so (laughs) 
Pray for her, never mind me. But so when it comes to walking humbly, two specific ministry areas that we're going to be focused in on. First is pray, second is heal. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, here. That's, blame it on the drugs. Living, living 6-8 involves walking humbly, but as you know, because I've already mentioned it, and you probably already know, it also involves loving mercy. Mercy is love that seeks to express itself in action. It's about showing compassion to others. It's about meeting the needs of people. It's about loving people where they are as they are. And just like with walking humbly, there are two specific areas that we're going to focus in on when it comes to loving mercy this next ministry year. The first specific area when it comes to loving mercy, and here's word number three. Word number one is? Pray. pray. Word number two is? Word number three is? You don't know it yet. (laughs) Okay, Okay. connect, yes. You guys are amazing. All right. Connect. We've talked lots about, and I don't need to go into this morning, that Jesus had a posture of welcome and acceptance for other people, no matter who they were. Right from people, the Pharisee, Nicodemus, to the prostitute, and everyone in between, Jesus had a posture of welcome towards people. And here at SBC, we want to follow his example. We want to love and accept people just like Jesus did. And because of that, we want to be unapologetically great at welcoming and accepting and connecting people. And sometimes, I'm not pointing a finger at anybody, I'm just saying sometimes that doesn't happen. Last spring, I had a coffee with my cousin, and she says, I was at your church on Sunday and you weren't there. I said, oh, awesome. She says, yeah, I brought my my mom, which would be my aunt, and she said, I brought my granddaughter to your church. I said, well, how was it? She said, the music was awesome. This guy that was preaching had a lot of energy. That was Kenan. (laughs) But she said, I'd never go back to your church. And I go, why? She said, it was the most unfriendly church I've ever been in. She said, I walked in. Nobody helped me. I was a visitor. Nobody helped me tell where my grandkid was supposed to go. Nobody talked to me the whole time I was there. I walked in, sat down, three of us walked out. Nobody talked to me. Okay, church, that's not good, right? Okay, that's not good, right? Right, I'm looking for a response on that. Okay, and and we got to do better, and we're trying to do better, and we all got to do better together. This isn't one ministry. This is us as the body of Christ saying we're going to be like Jesus, and we're not going to hear any more stories like that. And we've got something called Street to the Seed here. It is our First Impressions Team Ministry where we want to welcome people from the time they drive into their parking lot while they sit down and after they leave. And Lindsay and Dawn have an amazing team, and we're up in our game there. And, and we've also appointed, as you know, campus directors for connection and care at each of our, each of our services. And Lindsay's in charge of care and connection well he's in charge of connection overall but for this service and the other morning service he's the point guy Kenan's the point guy in the evening and Rick's the point guy at our campus we want to really up our game but here's where you're going to help us all of us can do this say with me no one stands alone no one stands alone now next one no one sits alone okay how simple is that is that easy Nod, yes. Okay, that's not hard to understand, right? No one sits alone, no one stands alone. So you come in here, and you're a regular at SBC, and you see someone stand alone, you're going to think in your head, what? No one's... Okay, so it really isn't this hard. Okay, no one stands alone. You come in here and someone's sitting alone. You're going to go, no one sits alone. What that means is you're going to try to have a conversation with somebody. If you see someone standing or sitting alone, just go up to them and say, good morning. Have a conversation. But I might embarrass myself. Get over it. All right? Go up to them and say, how are you? Good morning. I don't think we've met. And if you're wondering, like, are you going to make, because you're going to say, are you new here? And then they're going to say, no, I've been coming for five years, and you're going to feel like a fool, right? Easy way to get around that. Here's how you do that. You say, how long have you been coming to Saanich? right? 
And then if they say we're new, you go, wow, you're new, let me help you. And if they say five years, you say, I'm surprised we haven't met so far. See? And then you don't look foolish. See how helpful I am. There's your takeaway. All right? No one stands alone. No one sits alone. This is all of us in the game together. This isn't just a few people accepting and welcoming people. We all need to be doing it. I can't tell you how my heart dropped when my cousin told me that story. We need to do better. And we can do better if we all think no one stands alone, no one sits alone. It'll change things. Then, and I've got to keep moving here, after we welcome and accept people, we want to get them connected at the level they want to be connected at. That's really important for you to understand our church. That's one of our values. We're not going to push you to get connected. We want to get you connected at the level you want to be connected at. If you're happy just coming to Sundays, we're good with that. If you want to get involved, we're good with that. We want to get you connected at the level you want to be connected at. And the primary ways you get connected here at Sandage are through groups and through serving. All right? Those are the primary ways you're going to get connected. It's hard to get connected on a Sunday. Sunday is an entry point to getting connected. The way to get connected here into the body life of the church is through groups and through serving. I'm going to talk about serving in a minute, but let me just talk about groups. We have a ministry fair. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But at the back, there's a group's little table area. They have some great cards here. One is groups. It tells you about the different groups that we have here at the church. we got a men's breakfast, a walking group, connections, ladies, prayer, the, pray the word, community groups all over the city in people's homes. We have groups meeting. They're community groups all over the city. Young adults, retirees and friends, redeemed and breaking free, redeemed and breaking free. If you got a porn addiction program, that's your group right there. It tells you how to get in control. We also have courses coming up where you can connect with people. So go back. Talk to the people at the groups table. Find out how to get connected in groups. Church Let's go all in and work together to make SBC great at welcoming, accepting, and connecting people. Now, the second specific area when it comes to loving mercy, and here's our fourth word. The first word is? Second word is? Third word is? Fourth word is? Serve. Yeah, serve. The one who created the world, the one who holds the universe together, laid aside his glory and came down. Why? Mark 10, 45. Even the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came down to serve his creation and set it free. And as Christ followers, we're called to follow his example. We're called to follow the example of Jesus. Thus, as we all know, serving others should be a normal expression of what it means to follow Jesus. Serving is not only a way to love mercy, it's also a key way to act justly. And here at SPC, as you know, if you've been here any length of time, we want to serve beyond our walls. One of the ways we do that is through all our Serve the City events. We have Serve the City Christmas edition coming up. We have Serve the City in May where we go out on a Saturday and serve the city. We have the Backpack, Love in the Edition series, Love in the Laces series, sorry, that we just did in the summer. We, we have the Car Care edition, which is so cool because guys that are mechanically inclined get together and they, and they service the cars of single moms. We have the Parkland School edition where we go out and we make lunches for indigenous kids at Parkland School. So we're serving through Serve the City. We want you to serve through Adopt Your Block. Adopt Your Block is an initiative where you go out and you adopt your block, and, there, and there's information back at the mission table on how to do that, where you adopt your block and you pray for your block and you, you love on your neighbors. Then we're adopting our blocks as churches. We've adopted Churchill Estates next door. Christina goes over there every Wednesday night, building amazing relationships. God is moving. We are claiming that place in the name of Jesus for a great move of God. We want to see those people over there transformed in the name of Jesus. We also have Living Edge Market out at CPC. 
where, where it's just getting started, but great things are happening. And then we want, we want to serve through our dream centers. Dream centers minister to the whole person, and in that process, they give people hope and allow them to dream again, and as that happens, people encounter Jesus. I, I was just down uh, two weeks ago, last week actually, at our Mission San Catine Dream Center. Some of us went down for some meetings down there. God is doing some amazing things in Vicente Guerrero at our Dream Center. We right now in breakfast clubs have over 400 children every Saturday morning getting fed breakfast through us and our partners. Yesterday, we started a gang intervention program. We're trying to see how can we minister to gangs. We have a gang intervention program. We have 35 hardcore gang members from different gangs playing soccer together yesterday, and they didn't kill each other, which is really good. And they're playing together, and we're, they're building relationships with the Christian community as they do that. God is doing great things there. There's lots going on there. I'll fill you more in in the weeks to come. I don't have time this morning. But this next ministry year, we also want to launch the Victoria Dream Center that will minister to single parents, the working poor, in, in particular ways. We also want to serve within our walls. It isn't all about serving outside our walls. It's also about serving within our walls. And there are lots of opportunities for you to put a serving towel over your arm here at our church. In fact, you probably notice all these booths today. We're having a ministry fair, and they want me to be short this morning so that you can have extra time at the end of the service to go explore these booths, talk to people, and find out about groups, about mission, about worship arts, resources, and other things. And Lindsay's going to come up at the end of the service and explain all that to you. Now, maybe you're here today, and you're saying, but I'm too old to serve. Let me reintroduce you to my friend, Ralph. Five years ago, I was with my wife. We were on the Big Island of Hawaii. And if you know much about the Big Island of Hawaii, you know that one of the places there is YWAM has their University of the Nations there. It's kind of like YWAM's central base. And on Thursday nights, they have this worship time. It's open to the public. And so if we're ever there on a Thursday night in, on the Big Island, we like to go to YWAM's worship night. It's amazing to see all these young adults worshiping Jesus. It's great. Well, the first time we went, we met Ralph. Ralph uh, retired in 1998 with his wife. And Ralph headed over to YWAM to do, with his wife to do their discipleship training program. And he never left. In 1998, Ralph started serving with his wife as volunteers at the YWAM base. And when I met Ralph, he was 82. Still serving strong at the YWAM base. Heading up all their visitor information, their welcome center, and everything else. And I said to him five years ago, Ralph, when are you going to retire? He said, oh, probably in the next couple of years, I think we'll, we'll retire and stuff. Okay, two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, actually. I'm in Kona, Hawaii. I said to Sil, let's go to Thursday night to YWAM, to their worship experience. I walk in. Who do I meet? Ralph. Ralph's almost 87 now. I say, Ralph, I thought you were going to retire. Why would I retire? He says, I love it here. I'm pouring into young adults. I'm making a difference for Jesus. I said, well, when are you going to retire? I don't think we're going to. He's 87, working almost full-time as a volunteer at YWAM. And I tell you that story to tell you you're never too old to serve Jesus. You're never too old to serve Jesus. You're never out of the game until Jesus takes you home. You can always serve him. And so together, no matter what our age, Let's go all in and let's put serving towels over our arms in a big way this next ministry year. Let's serve inside our church. Let's serve outside our church. And let's see what Jesus is going to do. Okay, let's review. Two phrases. Three numbers. Four words. Okay, so far I've given you one phrase. The phrase is? Good. Some of you got it. Four words. First word is? Second word is? Third word is? Fourth word is? Awesome. Good job. And as we do what God requires, 
as we live six eight, as we walk humbly, love mercy, act justly, and, and specifically in this next ministry year, pray, heal, connect, and serve, we are asking one very simple question, and it's the second phrase, and here's that simple question. Are you ready? If then, why not now? If then, why not now? The early church was a church that prayed boldly and expectantly with unbelievable results, and we're asking, if then, why not now? The early church saw the blind and the lame and the sick and the broken healed and the oppressed set free, and we're asking, if then, why not now? The early church powerfully proclaimed the good news of Jesus in such a way that 3,000 people decided to follow Jesus in one day, and we're asking, if then, why not now? The early church was a church that experienced an incredible sense of community. They showed radical love and acceptance towards one another. The master worshiped with the slave. There was a deep sense of community and connection. And we're asking, if it could happen back then, why not now? The early church was a church that served. They served each other. They shared everything they had. They served others, especially the poor and the oppressed. And the result was, through their humble acts of service, that people were drawn to Jesus. And we're asking, if then, why not now? If God used the early church to transform lives and turn the world upside down, why can't he do the same thing today? If then, why not now? And as we do what only we can do, let's be expectant that God will do what only he can do. And here's your three numbers. Three numbers. A hundred, a thousand, ten thousand. Earlier this year, I was sitting out at a place I like to go to on the West Coast, and I was just having a day of solitude with Jesus, and I was praying, and I was thinking, and I was wondering, and I was journaling, and I I, I wrote down, wouldn't it be awesome to see a hundred people baptized? And I thought, wouldn't it be awesome to see a thousand lives transformed? And and, and what about if we impacted 10,000 lives? And I wrote that down. I was looking at that, and I was praying about that. I said, God, that would be so awesome if you could do that. And you know what the still, small voice of God said to me? Do you think that's all I can do? And I wrote down in my journal, how about we start there, God? (laughs) How about we start there? Wouldn't it be amazing to see a great move of God? Wouldn't wouldn't it be amazing to see 100 people baptized? Wouldn't it it be amazing between our ministry here and our ministry in Mexico and other places to see 1,000 lives transformed? Wouldn't it be crazy to see 10,000 people impacted? Do we believe God can do that? Do we believe our God's big enough to do that? If then, if then, why not now? Let's review. Two phrases, three numbers, four words. Phrase number one, live six, eight, gives us four words, pray, heal, connect, and serve, which leads to the second phrase, the simple question we're asking, which is, if then, God, why not now? Which leads to three numbers, a hundred, a thousand, and ten thousand. As I said last week, I don't think we've begun to grasp the supernatural adventure that God wants to take us on if we are willing to go all in. The kingdom of God is here and now. We need to live in it, and we need to live from it. And I'm praying for a great move of God in our midst. I'm asking, if then, why not now? Will you join me in prayer? Will you join me in asking the question? Will you join me on the adventure? Will you go all in? Let's pray.